Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to The Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC. On a Tuesday on which we are just living in a world of speculation, Naby Keita contracts, Joe Gomez contracts, Jude Bellingham, will he, won't he arrive at Liverpool this summer? For now, you'd probably bet on won't, but there's a lot of smoke for the not to be at least the embers of a fire. But let's look at the other two things. Naby Keita contract, Joe Gomez contract. Now, Joe right now is the fourth choice centre-back and he's the backup right back. And for a player of his ability, that's not really a fitting role. Joe Gomez is a Rolls-Royce of a centre-back. He would start for the majority of teams in the Premier League. and He can go up and down. He wouldn't start for City, let's be fair. They have Diaz and they have Laporte. But he's better than anyone else they have. He's better than John Stones. He's better than Nathan Ake. He doesn't start for us. But he would start for Chelsea. You could play him in the middle role of a three or on the right of a three. He would start for Spurs in the middle of that back three. He'd be ideal for the middle of a Conte back three. Look what Conte has done in the past with Benucci and David Luiz. While Tottenham have just spent £50 million on Richarlison, the better move would have been to offer that money for Joe Gomez and put him in the middle of their back three, but they didn't, and we digress. Arsenal, he absolutely starts for them. He's much better than Ben White. He's better than Will- William Saliba. He would start next to Gabriel. He would be the best centre-back at Manchester United without a shadow of a doubt. He would start for West Ham. He would start for Leicester. Him and Fafana would be a partnership I think their fans could get very excited about. He'd start for Brighton without question. He'd be their best centre-back and a a Gomez-Dunk-Webster back three would be a lot of fun. He'd obviously start for Wolves and of course he'd start for anyone in the bottom half of the league so you've got 18 Premier League teams for which Joe Gomez would start and with the exception of Spurs I think he'd be the best centre back at the club that's how good Joe Gomez is and you look around Europe and he would start for anybody in Syria. He'd start for anybody in France. He'd start for anybody in Germany. Like he gets in the Bayern team over Upamecano without question. They could go to a three of Gomez, Upamecano, and Lucas Hernandez, and that would be very, very good. You look at Spain. He obviously starts for anybody outside of their big three. And then he starts for Atletico Madrid. Him and Jimenez would be a good pairing. Jimenez's aggressive front foot style and Gomez's kind of reading of the game, calmness and sweeping ability would be a good pairing. He starts for Barcelona. He is better now than Jared Pique is. So you'd have him and Arreo. And he starts for Real Madrid because he's a better central defender than David Alaba. So you shove Alaba back to left back, which is 
what he truly is, and you go Milito and Gomez. And Gomez is better than Rudiger. So it's Milito or Rudiger. It's not Gomez. Gomez would start. There are two teams in Europe for whom Joe Gomez isn't a starter. Manchester City and Liverpool. And he's unfortunate that he's just at one of those two teams. And he's also unfortunate that we just we don't just have two great centre-backs, we've got three of them. Virgil, Ibu, Matip, and Joe is great as well. We have four great centre-backs. We have the best group of centre-backs anywhere in world football. Just think about that for a second. And then cast your mind back to when you were forced to watch Skirtle and Lovren as a pair. Or Skirtle and the corpse of Colo Toure as a pair. Or Lovren and Toure. Or Lovren and anybody. We now have the best group of centre-backs in world football. And Joe Gomez would be the best third centre-back anywhere else. There's only one other club, remember, that I don't believe he'd start for, and that's City. But he would be their third centre-back. He's our fourth centre-back. Now, he'll obviously get the opportunity to battle for the third spot, but... Last season, the way it seemed to be was that Ibu and Joel were the right-side centre-backs and Virgil and Joe were the left-side centre-backs and Joe would play when Virgil did not. Now, it may be a thing that Liverpool are planning to play Virgil a little less in the coming season. He won't probably play in the Cups. You could leave him out of certain league games and you can leave him out of certain Champions League games. So there's games for Gomez. There'll be games at right back for him as well because Calvin Ramsey, despite being brought in to be the back of right back, is only 18 and is stepping up massively in terms of the calibre of opposition. The Scottish Premiership is basically like League One. If you took two really good championship teams and put them in League One, that's basically the Scottish Premiership. So Ramsey's going to have some time to develop, which means Gomez is the primary backup at right back this season. So maybe there's a way to get him, I don't know, 18, 20 starts across all competitions. And then some sub appearances with five subs that makes it easier for Klopp this year as well to keep people happy. Now, I do think we will get to a point, and I did think it will be this summer, when Joe might look at things and say, it's time for me to to move on. It's time for me to go and have my own team and be the best centre-back at a different club. But as things stand, he seems comfortable to stay. And play it out another year and see what happens. And and that's probably a wise thing because that injury he has, or that he had, that's a two-year injury. Torn patella tendon is a two-year injury. It's a year just to get back to a level where you're comfortable enough to play regularly and then another year to get back to your very best level where you can really start to trust yourself. But he's just been so unfortunate with injuries over his career. You know, he joins Liverpool in the summer of 15. Klopp arrives a few months later and he tears his ACL. He plays only 618 minutes that season. The majority of them obviously at left back. Then in 16-17, he's working his way back from the ACL tear. He's still a young player. He plays 270 senior minutes, three FA Cup appearances. 
doesn't play at all in the league, doesn't play in the League Cup. Into 1718, and he looks like he might get an opportunity to establish himself as the first choice right back because Nathaniel Klein gets hurt. Nathaniel Klein wasn't really of the level we needed anyway. And Gomez plays 2,463 minutes, plays 28 of his 30 appearances at right back. But unfortunately for Joe, Trent Alexander-Arnold appears on the scene and we all know what he's gone on to do. 1819, he gets his opportunity in the middle. All told, he plays 26 games, 13 at centre-back, 11 at right-back, 2 at left-back. 1644 minutes, but he gets injured and ends up missing a large chunk of the season after ankle surgery, playing right back against Burnley, Ben Mee tackles him, Joe breaks his ankle. Misses the body of the season. If that doesn't happen, Lovren doesn't play centre-back against City, and we probably win the league. 1920 then, Joe is back. 28 games in the Premier League, 43 in all competitions, 3,289 minutes, 34 games at centre-back. He and Virgil are monstrous together. And we win the league. He has to wait his chance because Joel is playing well. But once he gets in, he doesn't look back and he's just the guy next to Virgil all the way along. 2020-21, he starts the season quite well, but then he tears his patella tandem on England duty. We've just had the devastating news that Virgil's going to miss the entire season. Joe plays 12 games, 979 minutes, and he's done for the year. And then it takes him the better part of a year to come back this past season 1,036 minutes across 21 appearances. More games at right back than centre back. 327 minutes in the league. You look at his career, he's been so unfortunate with injuries. He's been forced to miss large chunks of multiple seasons. Five Premier League games, no Premier League games. 23, 16, 28, 7 and 8. Four of his seven seasons, less than 10 Premier League appearances. Five of them missing over half the season. That's tough on a young player. And Joe is now 25. He's about to enter his best years. And I, like I said, he is one of the best centre-backs in the league. You can't name 10 centre-backs in the league better than Joe Gomez, even including the other three at Liverpool. There aren't 10 better than him. He's England's best centre-back. He should be first choice for England, but he's fourth choice for Liverpool. He only has 11 caps, large part because of injuries, but there's no doubt he should be starting for England. He is an outstanding defender. And that's why I do believe he may look to move on because people say, oh, he'll be Virgil's successor. Virgil's only 30. Virgil's not going anywhere. Virgil could be great for another five, six years. Look at Thiago Silva's 37, was never nearly as good as Virgil. There's no reason Virgil can't play another five, six years at a very, very high level. By which point, Gomez will be in his 30s. Ibu's 22. And yet, yeah, Matip is 30, 31. So people say, oh, well, he'll be the Matip replacement. Great, so he'll be the third choice centre-back then. I don't think that's going to keep Joe happy. 
Now, maybe it will. But I'd be surprised. Because I think he knows how good he is. If we can tie him down to a contract extension this summer, it's a big thing for us because next summer he'd only have one year left on his contract and his value would drop. So if we can tack a couple of years on there, it just protects his value. Naby, well, Naby's a different case. Naby arrived at Liverpool with a lot of hype. We obviously waited a year to get Naby Keita having signed him from Leipzig or agreed a deal with Leipzig for him to arrive the following season. He had that incredible first year at Leipzig. Second year, he was very good, just not quite as good. He comes over, he gets given the number eight jersey. And unfortunately for Naby, people who hadn't seen him play made assumptions with regards to what type of player he was and just assumed he was some sort of N'Golo Kante remix. All told, he plays 33 games, 1,817 minutes. Has the groin injury against Barcelona in the semi-final first leg, which ends his season. He'd had a couple of muscle injuries before that that cost him some games, but when he played, he was generally good. But he gets injured at the end of the season, and that really hurts him. 19 20, 27 games, 1,395 minutes. But there's just, there's injuries, there's inconsistencies. He struggles to overcome that first groin injury. Everything else is linked to that groin injury. 2021, he plays 16 games, 714 minutes. It's a really disappointing season. Again, he gets COVID, he gets a hamstring injury, an ankle injury. He ends the season not getting a look in, doesn't play any of the last nine league games for whatever reason. Maybe there was talk at the time, maybe it was that they decided to shut him down and aim to have him ready for this year because last year was obviously such a write-off. And to be fair, he played 40 games this past season, 2,086 minutes. He did have a hamstring injury in November. And then he had a small knee issue in late March. But aside from that, he was available pretty much all season. And when he played, he was really good. There's one bad game from Naby last season, Atletico Madrid away, he get taken off at half time. And he wasn't as bad as people made out, and he scored a worldie. If others had had that season, they'd be getting loaded, but that doesn't happen. The move with Naby, as seen last season, is to platoon him in that left-sided central midfield role with Thiago, so one of them's always on the pitch, because look at the results with and without we're so much better when one of them plays. We're incredible when both of them play, but we're so much better when one of them plays. Look at the league results last season. When Naby starts, beat Norwich, beat Burnley, beat Watford, beat Manchester United. We drew with Brighton, but we were winning and he got injured. Drew with Spurs away when he played in midfield with James Milner and Tyler Morton. Beat Burnley, beat Norwich, beat West Ham, beat Brighton, beat Everton, beat Newcastle, beat Aston Villa, beat Wolves. Yet when he wasn't there, or when he wasn't starting, we lose to West Ham, we draw with Brentford, draw with Man City. City, draw with Chelsea, lose to Leicester, draw with City, draw with Spurs. He was the best player on the pitch in the League Cup final, and I thought he was one of the best players on the pitch in the FA Cup final. He was brilliant in the semi-final against Man City. 
Naby's at a contract next summer. We've got far too much money invested in Naby to allow him to leave for free. So we need to find an agreement on a contract, even if it's a two-year agreement, to just keep him at the club till, what would that be, 2025? When he'll be 30. And at that point, if he wants to go, fair enough. At that point, he'd have been at the club seven years, but we can't let him leave after five years on a free when we paid 48 million plus the add-ons. He's a very, very good player. He hasn't lived up to the hype because nobody could have lived up to the hype. Nobody could have lived up to being given Gerard's jersey and been talked about like they were the next N'Golo Kante when he's a totally different type of player. Nobody could have lived up to that hype. Like even... Go on his Wikipedia page. Look at the section titled Style of Play. While writing for The Garden, Nick Amos and Nick Miller described Keita as a dynamic box-to-box central midfielder, likening him to N'Golo Kante. They also noted, however, that he is able to distribute the ball with range and accuracy and score goals, which has instead frequently led to him being compared to Brazilian Portuguese former playmaker Deco. Deco. So he's a Nabi, he's a he's a N'Golo Kante Deco hybrid. David Usher of ESPN has described Keita as an energetic midfielder with good defensive qualities, which allow him to play in a holding role if possible, or if necessary. So he hadn't seen him play either. Usher went on to note that Keita is quick, skillful, creative, and direct. He can dribble past shoot and frequently looks makes a spectacular look routine. He can't play in a holding role. It's not his role at all. You take away one of his best attributes which is pressing but the two Knicks in the Guardian like a Kante Deco hybrid Jesus wept who was going to live up to that get this done get him signed make sure he stays he was really good last season and we need him simple as that he's the third best midfielder at the club he is the third best midfielder of the club. Uh, this is Anfield. How John Barnes became poetry in motion and one of Liverpool's greatest. Do check that out. A joyous ride to the brink of immortality. Now what next for Liverpool? Seven things spotted as Liverpool returned for pre-season, including three new faces. Uh, Nico Williams appears to be training away from the club as he prepares for a move elsewhere. Albert Riera, former Liverpool winger, um, has been appointed as manager of Olympia Lubajna, wherever. Um, But during his first press conference, Ultras stormed the room and he had to leave, (laughs) leave his own press conference. Uh, so they're obviously the Slovenian club. I didn't realize he'd been a Galatasaray assistant. I had no idea he'd got into coaching and management. Good luck to him. I hope he does well. I always liked Riera. Uh, Liverpool have confirmed the latest loan exit as goalkeeper makes next step. Vitezlav Jaros is heading out for his third consecutive loan spell. Uh, he was at St. Patrick's, St. Patrick's Athletic and was brilliant for them. Then he was at Notts County, and now he is on his way to Stockport. Interesting to note that he and Pitaluga are going fairly local with their loans. And my assumption is it's so they can train at the AXA a couple of times a week so that they don't actually have to move. They can just stay living where they are, keeps them comfortable, keeps them in the surroundings that they know, that they can be monitored much more carefully. I think that's a smart move. Uh, ben Woodburn seals championship move with 11-word farewell to Liverpool. 
Ben Woodburn, well, Ben Woodburn has left Liverpool after 16 years. 16 years, that is crazy. And he's gone to Preston North End. Uh, 16 amazing, 16 years this amazing club, at this amazing club, thank you for everything, at Liverpool FC. I hope he does really well. I really do. I really hope he does well. He always seemed like a really good lad. And he's got a lot of talent. It's just about finding the right position for him. But he's only 22, which is mad, because he's been around for so long. Uh, James Balagizzi has said he wants to use his loan to try to impress and show people what he can do. He's obviously gone to Crawley. Uh, new Go Joe Gomez contract now, a top priority for Liverpool. A top priority, not the top priority. Yeah, but it should be. It should be one of the top priorities without question. Him and Naby are the two most important deals to get sorted. And um, they need to get the Gomez one done. James Milner has now started his 21st pre-season as a professional. And that is more summers than some have lived on this planet, including four of his teammates. Milner's career began before Cade Gordon, Calvin Ramsey, Fabio Carvalho and Harvey Elliott were all born. That is kind of funny. To be fair, that is kind of funny. He is just an old man at this point. Uh, Liverpool.com then. Liverpool may already have incredible talent. Jurgen Klopp knows could be set to explode. Jurgen Klopp can conduct three Liverpool experiments to unlock Roberto Firmino again. We need to stop with this type of stuff. Um, Jurgen Klopp sent, ne sorry, Neymar sent Jurgen Klopp transfer message as Liverpool submit 60 million bid for Brazil for the some of these are just brilliant. They like, some of these journalists just live in a fantasy world where they just make up absolute nonsense. What's this? This is going to be absolute tripe. Uh, Liverpool have held talks with Cody Gakpo. I doubt it. Rafinha bid claim okay, so this is where the 60 million comes from. Former Liverpool star Don Hutchinson believes only Lionel Messi was better than PSG and Brazil forward Neymar at his peak. But now teams like Jurgen Klopp won't sign him despite him being seemingly available. He is a talent in his pomp There was only Messi better than him. Yeah, but his peak was when he was like 22 to 24. He's been a part-time footballer for years. And now he's 30, he's on ludicrous wages and nobody wants him because he doesn't play. Plays half the games. Plays 2,300 minutes a season. Uh, Jurgen Klopp could be about to have another Darwin Nunes moment and hint at Liverpool transfer. Jurgen Klopp could be about to get a closer look at Benjamin Sesko this summer and have another Darwin Nunes moment. Benjamin Sesko is really, really talented. And I actually think he could play with Darwin in a two. I think their skill sets would work. Very, very quick. Very, very powerful. Massive. Is he 6'5", I think? 6'4". Benjamin Sesko is really talented and he's only 19. I think he could actually play with Darwin. I think Darwin could play with a, a target man type if you want. Um, but it's not something to worry about for now. Uh, finally then, AnfieldIndex.com, the headline piece, Imagine the Carnage, of course, written by Stephen Smith. Do check that one out. And there is a new scouted up, myself and Carl. Went around the Premier League, had a chat about all the signings uh, that we hadn't previously discussed. Also talked about the Salah contract. And uh, there's that, there's the new Raw Retro, the latest Anfield Index podcast, 
There's our news round reaction to the Salah contract. And there's a whole lot more to come this week. So do check that all out on Anfield Index and AnfieldIndex.com. And for all your merchandising needs, check out the Anfield Index shop, which you'll find on Etsy and use the code RED10 for 10% off at checkout. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows.